All righty, folks. On this channel, we do our best to stay out of the cesspool that is politics. Uh, we will continue to try to do that going forward, even on this topic. But McCarthy was fired for all intents and purposes yesterday as the Speaker of the House, and that is historic. Uh, it yeah. also happens in the front of what was just approved, a 45-day kind of uh, budget continuing resolution, which the clock is ticking. So we're going to talk about this because it may have significant implications for what transpires over the next 45 days. And to have this conversation, we're going to have the one and only and wonderful Anna Kelly. Hi, Anna. Hi. So good to be here on this very historic week. This has never happened before that we've had a Speaker of the House ousted um, yeah. during major budget impasse discussion. So it will be interesting to see how all of this plays out. But I think it's, you know, really telling of how divided our country is politically, not just left and right, um, but far left and left and far right and right and far left and right from each other. And, you know, the fact that eight senators can override 200 and 10 senators on one yeah. party to oust anyone that does something they don't like is really problematic. And, you know, the division may continue to get worse. And if we look at histories of other countries, as they start to decline, the polarization of the people is one of, you know, the big indicators mm -hmm. that there's been a lot of problems in those countries. And I think that it's kind of a yeah a symptom of a greater problem that we have in the United States that unfortunately I don't see getting a whole lot better if we continue on the path we are of, mm -hmm. of national polarization um, across many, many, many different issues. Yeah, this is, this is something that Ray Dalio has been bringing up for several years now. And it's kind yes. of, it feels like it's happening in slow motion and it's like, you want to try to stop it, but, it's like you're almost in a dream state. You you can't you can't stop this polarization. And I want to just rewind the clock because this is what I think happened that led to eight Republicans, eight firing McCarthy. Okay. Yes. So we had a budget, uh, no uh, no budget getting done. We were threat October first. We would have been the government would have been shut down. So McCarthy and team are trying to get um, concessions uh, going into that, right? More budget cuts, more fiscal responsibility. Um, you know, these are things they wanted. It wasn't happening. Right. So McCarthy, literally nearly at the last minute, agrees to put together a what I'll call a clean bill. Let's buy 45 days, no budget cuts, no support for the wall, right, or, or securing the southern border. And no money for Ukraine. Clearly a clean bill. Kind of, yes. I would argue, acting like the adult in the room. So yes, that we can I, keep the I would too. Yeah. Clearly being the adult in the room, buying time for further negotiations. Because a government shutdown helps no one. Right. That action of reaching across the aisle as a Republican to get, frankly, more Democrats to vote for it than Republicans, because I think 200 Democrats voted in 100 Republicans to keep the government open. Again, yes. no cuts, no border wall, no money for Ukraine, clean bill. He gets fired by eight Republicans for working across the aisle on the behalf of the American people. Right. He got fired by eight, eight people. That's, that is that's crazy. What I think happened. It, that's exactly what happened. And, you know, regardless of what you think about McCarthy, you know, as a lifelong politician or someone like Gates, that's more of an outsider. You know, I try to look at these things from a standpoint of, you know, and McCarthy said this, they'll all say it's they're doing what they do for the good of the country, right? They all believe that. Um, and they've got some deeply held views. But, you know, the, the issue is if, if McCarthy wasn't willing to reach across the aisle and say, We've got to come up with something that we can agree with, right? There's going to be a lot of things that you d disagree with, especially far right, like the Gates, you know, pro mega Republican Trump, though, and the far left, you know, the AOCs and the um, Ilan Omar's of, of the world. You know, they're not going to agree, and they they're they're fighting Never constantly, but they're co also fighting their own party 
for being willing to talk to the other side. And that's what got us in this mess is that years and years and years of, you know, hard line, we're not going to compromise on anything ends up getting you pet projects on both sides that just exacerbates government spending and our almost $2 trillion national debt. And so you have to have somebody, from my perspective, just looking at this as a economy and the the trajectory yep. that the United States is going on. Gates said some things that were true. You know, we sure. can't continue the spending. We can't continue to compromise on big spending programs that's putting us further and further into debt. And that voice I agree. is I agree. needed in Congress. Yes. And that voice, you know, is needed to say, we've got to start making some big changes. And if you, you know, going back to Dalio, what he talks about is when you get these big debt cycles and you start to you know, spend way more than you produce as a country, inevitably it creates these big wealth gaps. The rich get richer, the poor get poorer. And that division between rich and poor, you know, the worker and the corporations, you know, the all these labor groups that are that are striking against the big, big bad corporations, it creates such polarity. Um and and infighting and that polarity just gets worse and worse and worse and so really the only way for a country to survive is to have those that are willing to reach across the aisle and say yes we have a spending problem and we recognize it yes we need to make progress but what can we do today to keep the government going because mm -hmm. if if they don't keep the government going um and this is i think what mccarthy was trying to say if we don't keep it going we risk another fitch downgrade right oh, yeah. we already well, it, have yeah. an inflationary issue but if we have a lot of debt and we're further downgraded and our government isn't paying what it needs to, what is that going to do to interest rates and treasury yields, Michael? It's going to say for anyone to be willing to take the risk that used to be risk-free rate of return and invest in the United States debt, they're going to demand such a high interest rate, that high, high interest rate that they're going to demand for buying treasuries, which the government has to sell in order to help pay down this deficit um, in the era that we are today, that could destroy our economy. It really can because the I debt agree. payments would then be astronomical. And they're already almost to the point of, you know, being interest debt payments higher than than um, spending on military. Yeah. So what I want to do now is kind of play it forward because um, we need a new House speaker. Right. The last one took 15 rounds to approve. I don't remember. I don't know if you remember that it took 15. Oh, rounds. Yes, to approve. it was crazy. So, uh, you know, that's going to be interesting. But I think the unfortunate next speaker, whoever it is, they now know if you work with the other side, you're going to get fired. So, yeah. okay. So if that, if we agree on that and we have this clock that's now, I don't know, 41 days left or something. I see I see so I see a couple of things. I think the government shutdown's coming. I actually thought it was coming before McCarthy reached out. I now believe it will be the longest one ever. I thought the one you know last week would be the longest one ever because again there is no incentive to work across the aisle and if you don't work across the aisle you get nothing done. Right. And then lastly, I actually think so I think there are three rating agencies. Two of them have already downgraded our debt. I would be shocked if the third doesn't downgrade our debt in the next 10 days just where we are right because they see they see government stand still and continued spending and continued national debt problems so i i agree with you you know none of this is good for america regardless of again where you are politically none of this is good for people willing to step up and and basically create political suicide to say, I'm going to be the person that comes in and I know you may kick me out and I know you may ask me, but I'm going to be the one that comes in and says, we have a problem with our national debt. We have to fix it. And that's going to require us to reach across the aisle. And it's going to require people to um, do things that are not popular with an ever increasing polarized constituency. And they know that because they're bucking the system, they probably won't get reelected. And so who has the courage? There's always somebody, Michael, that my hope is that is this. 
when stuff gets really bad in a country, there's always somebody who rises up and becomes that next leader that can take us to the next level. And so I'm hoping that some of this makes people on both sides of the aisle say, this is not working anyway anymore. And we're now kind of in this banana republic situation where the United States is almost in the same, you know, dire straits as some of these other countries where yeah. if we don't fix things, we're leaving a really bad situation, not just for America for the next decade, but for future generations. And so oh, I'm it, hopeful. This, dude, this is this is like this is like in the next six weeks, we could start seeing some real. Right, we get a we get the third and final downgrade. We get a government shutdown that goes past the fifty five days, which I think is the longest one to date. We go we go into Q one with the government shutdown. Where do you think interest rates are going to be then? I mean, my goodness, it, it's 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 hard, and this is coming into an election cycle, right? Yeah, so exactly. you want to know? I mean, again, I, I I don't I don't focus a ton on politics, other than to say. Where is the government moving us? Are we moving yeah. in, a, in a good direction? And is there somebody that can kind of ha help stop it? But, you know, as we go into a, a presidential uh, campaign cycle, you know, it makes me wonder, number one, when you've got such polarity, even within each party, you almost have like four different parties now. And then you've got At the least four. Yeah. It's yeah. very difficult for the majority to actually uh, vote somebody in right when they're given basically two choices um yeah bad left or bad right <laughs> you know and so the question is are we ever going to get to a place where there's enough people that understand what's really happening and that's i don't think they do but if there was enough americans that really understood what was happening would you finally elect an independent party leader yeah I and don't know. I mean, it's or is it just going like to continue yeah. to get more and more polarity, which is not good for America? So I hope that people can take, you know, put back their own political thoughts on different pet issues and say, how can we elect someone who is articulate, who's convincing, who can work across the aisle, someone kind of like Kevin McCarthy um, again? And I don't know a lot about his political background or if, you know, that he really has sold out to lobbyists or any of that stuff. I don't know. But, but someone yeah, but, who but can to your, say, to your, let's to your compromise. Point. Yeah, to your point, the, the only way to get stuff done in a government structure like ours today is to work across the aisle. You have to. You have to. Otherwise, right. it's a banana republic and you have just extremes and nothing gets done. Nothing getting done is a bad outcome. It, it It's Absolutely. one of the options and it's not a great one. And mm -hmm. I, I think it's going to lead to that third downgrade in, in probably in pretty short order. Um, and again, so. then what happens, Michael? So that's what I, I don't think enough people understand okay, why is it a big deal for the U.S. to be downgraded? Why is it a big deal to add another, you know, couple hundred billion dollars in, <laughs> in deficit spending? And at a high level, and maybe this is a topic for a whole nother show, but, you know, what are countries' options left when your debt exceeds GDP, 120% of, of what a country can actually produce? You don't have enough production to tax people. So you get rid of your debt by taxing people. And right now, I don't remember the exact number, Michael, but I think it's about $250,000 per person that the government would have to tax to get rid of their deficit. So you can't really tax an economy that's struggling and that may head into a recession and may have layoffs. You'd have political outcry, right? You'd have you could have some kind of internal wars, right? Um, so you can't tax everybody. Um, you, you've got to cut spending. And if you don't cut spending, and you can't tax people, then you inflate away the debt by inflating away your currency. That's printing more money, which makes your, your currency be able to produce less. And you hope that you can kind of balance low enough interest rates to pay off your debt with high enough interest rates to get people to, to buy those treasuries. And right now we're at this point where nobody wants to buy treasuries. And that's why you see the bond market going crazy. You see treasury rates going up because it's going to take higher and higher and higher rates. Everybody's worried about CPI. What's the Fed going to do because of inflation? They're not understanding that a bigger issue to the economy is where is the U.S. going to have to basically where are treasury rates going to have to land that the U.S. can incentivize other people in other countries to continue to invest in us to pay down our debt. And I see that, Michael, as extremely inflationary for the United States because it's going to cause 
extremely high interest rates while you have very, very low growth, that is stagflation that we've been talking about just getting worse and staying there longer. And so people need to understand this isn't just a political you know, show of what happened. It has real consequences for, yeah. for the United States and our economic health over the next several generations. And so it's important for us to watch, talk to our politicians, say, hey, we're we're firm on these issues that we believe strongly on, but you've got to reach across the aisle and you got to keep America running and you got to cut, you got to you know got to start you know getting rid of deficit spending. spending and start yeah. cutting spending. It's it's the only option really, Michael. No, I totally agree. We've got to cut spending. This this deficit, you know, trillion dollars here, trillion dollars there. Enough of this. The Inflation Reduction Act, the Chip Act. These are all inflationary, and yeah. um, we have a spending problem. There's no doubt. There's a lot of things that I heard Gates say yesterday that's right. But still, taking the step of firing the guy because he reached across the aisle sets a very dangerous precedent. Yes, that I don't think is good for us. Right. I, agree I agree with, with the you. statement, cut spending. I agree. Yes, but but to do what was done because they reached across the aisle is um, I don't look dangerous. I, dangerous. The next the next forty days or whatever it is are are, are um, important. Because again, I think I think if they go the wrong direction, Anna, we get to the government shutdown. There is a shutdown. Nothing happens until the new year. So that's another 45 days. And you know, we're into the 2024 at that point. It's it's a scary thought. It is. And when you add other things going on globally, you know, when you've got basic basically a, a war, a de facto war against Russia and, you know, escalating tensions, getting close to crossing that thin red line, you know, with yeah. China, when an economy is struggling and when you start to see that, oh, this this country can't keep it together, they're too busy fighting each other. Oftentimes, what brings a country to the brink that's already in that situation is some kind of external event like an enemy rising up and say now's the time to kick them while they're down yeah. um and so there's a real risk of that and so i think we need to not be you know two rose colored glasses and say oh this isn't a, a nothing burger and it's going to be fine mm. there's it, it we're, we're on such a husp of many things breaking on our in our own economy that when you add this um, to the other things that are going on, it, it makes us very vulnerable as a country. And so, yes, I have concerns, you know, there, and it's really difficult to predict, you know, bring it back to investing. Um, of course, you know, America and our, and our future health is more important than a portfolio today, but it does impact us. And so we say, what do we do about it? You've really got to be able to hedge and diversify today and say, you know, if our economy goes into deep recession or we have extremely high interest rates and, you know, inflation or this stagflation, how are you diversifying your portfolio? What hard assets are you buying that's going to be able to weather this kind of time? And so it, it has to make us think as investors, Michael, not just about growth, 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 high returns, but how can I create high enough returns to, you know, deal with what, what it is that might be coming? And how can I preserve what I have first and foremost and create more income even mm -hmm. before you think about future growth? So we've got to think about these things and say, what's happening in, in current events? Now, how do we react as investors and protect ourselves as we look to hopefully grow our portfolios in a, in a stagnating economy for the maybe the next decade or more? Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Well, history was done yesterday, the first time ever the next 45 days or 41 days are going to be important to watch because um, it could get better. It could get worse. We're going to be paying attention. Anna, where can people find you? Great. You can find me here. You can find me on social media at Anna Kelly, REI Mom, and my new website, AnnaKellyInvesting.com for coaching and consulting. Awesome. Thank you so much.